what's inside And you call me out to pull me in You tell me I can start again I don't need to keep on hiding I'm fully in the In love by you church. I think that was worth tuning in just for that, that truth. And just want to thank all of our incredible musicians and worship leaders for all that they do and um, continuing to do to to lead in this season and our our amazing team to edit all that and do that. We're we're, we're thrilled to still be able to stay connected with you in this season. And and our hope today and our time together is that you would be reminded that there's an anchor that's available to you and that's your heavenly Father. That's your amazing Savior. We're going to be talking about that today as we continue in this season together. If you're joining us for the first time, my name's Jeff. I'm on staff here at Gwinnett Church, and thank you. However you got here, maybe somebody invited you. Um, we're thrilled that you're here. If you're not from the Gwinnett area, we would love to know that as well. And so you can go to Instagram, and you can take a picture and put hashtag for Gwinnett. That'll be an opportunity for us to say hey to you. We'll connect with you either on Instagram or Facebook. And um, But we're just thrilled that you're here. Uh, we'll be here for a little bit. I'm starting a new series today that you'll hear in just a second. But today, I wanted to let you know, give you a little bit of a heads up that something really important is happening next Sunday, and it's Mother's Day. And we wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of a preview, so even in this season, you can still honor mom, because mom certainly deserves to be honored. So one of our team members, Alyssa Kang, is going to give you a couple of ideas about how you can begin to prepare for Mother's Day next Sunday. Here's Alyssa. Thanks, Jeff. I am so excited because I know that I haven't been able to hug my mom in a long time, and you probably haven't either. But that doesn't mean that Mother's Day can't be special, right? So venture along with me because we're going to drive around town and find some local restaurants that are doing cool things, offering takeout and delivery around town for Mother's Day. And coming along with me is my husband and Evelyn. All right, let's go check them out. All right, so 
we're here at Rico's World Famous. And actually, I love their food to begin with, but they're doing some really cool things. They're offering takeout and family meals. And for Mother's Day, they're doing a special Mother's Day brunch special. For a family of five, you can get a bundle. All you have to do is call in and pick up the order. And they're partnering with Main Street Blooms across the street for flowers. How awesome is that? So check them out. We're here in Peachtree Corners at a place called Beard Papa's. They have cream puffs, and it is not your average cream puff. They're so good. And the great thing about this location is that it's also right next to some really great restaurants like Taqueria Tsunami and Poke Works. And all you have to do when you come to order here at Beard Papa's is you just park. There's a sign on their door with a, a giant printout of their phone number. You call in and they do contactless um, drop off at your car where they just like leave it on the hood of your car, which is awesome. We're here at our last location. We're actually at Parsons Alley in downtown Duluth at Good Word Brewing. We love this restaurant. It's a local restaurant with awesome food. And this place is actually doing a Mother's Day special as well, where you can come pick up food, take it home for your entire family. And you can find more information on their social media accounts. So that wraps up our day of journeying around a few different locations in Gwinnett County. We hope this gives you some fun ideas to be able to support local and be for Gwinnett while also celebrating your mother. Um, but whatever way you end up celebrating mom, we just hope that it's a super special day. Love you guys. Well, thanks, Alyssa. And we hope that you find those tips helpful as we prepare next Sunday for Mother's Day. Now, before Mother's Day, we're excited about today. We're gonna to begin with our great friend, Paul Taylor Smith. Paul's gonna be leading us in a song called When the Fight Calls. And if you feel like you're in a fight right now, and who doesn't? Uh, we believe this song will be very helpful for all of us and really help lead us to where we're gonna go for a few minutes this morning. So welcome to Gwinnett Church Online. We're so thrilled that you're here. Well, hey there, Gwinnett Church. We're so excited to worship with you this morning. Uh, we can't wait to sing together virtually. I know it might be strange in a season like this, but let's just be reminded of what Jesus said to his disciples as one of the last things he told them on earth. He said uh, in John chapter 16, he said, you will have trouble in this world. And then he says something so cool. He says, but take heart because I've overcome the world. If you're feeling alone, if you're feeling frustrated or discouraged, just be reminded that Jesus has overcome the world and we have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about, even though the times are hard. So let's just open our hands and our hearts to worship Jesus together today.
So one of the reasons we sing these songs is to remind ourselves in good times and challenging times that the grace and the mercy and the love of God is available to us. But it doesn't just flow to us, it should flow through us to impact the world around us. And that's certainly what is happening through you in these days. And so I wanted you to hear from a few of our community partners as you've been able to provide financially for them. We've shifted some of our programming dollars to be able to support these incredible people and these incredible organizations in these challenging days. And I wanted you to hear directly from them today. Hi, my name is Mary Frances Bowley from Wellspring Living, and I just want to thank Gwinnett Church for your generosity again to help us serve victims who are fallen prey to sexual exploitation, especially trafficking. And thank you so much because your donation is going to help us in tremendous ways. First of all, we serve at our youth academy over 72 kids virtually but also kind of taking boxes of food to their families because they can't even make it to the food distribution sites. And so you're going to help us restock that pantry that is actually depleted at this point. We're also needing a lot of shoes, tennis shoes especially for our kids um, who are trying to get jobs and, and move forward in their life. And then finally, we um, are very excited that we have our very first young male in our receiving center and we need lots of clothes. So so what your gift is going to do is provide for these very urgent needs during this time of crisis where we need to begin to continue to care for those who need this most. Thank you again so much. Hi, my name is Henny Jordan. And I'm Arturo Reyes. And we both work at Good Samaritan Health Centers of Gwinnett. Good Sam Gwinnett is Gwinnett County's largest and full-time Christian charitable clinic that provides medical, dental, pharmacy, and counseling services to the low-income and uninsured population. And your generous gift, Gwinnett Church, will be covering the salary for one of our medical assistants like myself. So thank you so much for that. Thank you again. Stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless you. Hi, Gwinnett Church. My name is Kim Phillips. I'm the Executive Director of the North Gwinnett Co-op. As you can imagine, we've been extremely busy the last two months. Just in the last two months alone, we have done more food distributions than we did all of 2019. Gwinnett Church has been extremely generous to us, which has allowed us to buy fresh produce, uh, fruits and vegetables for our families, um, and it will also enable us to provide financial assistance to families in need. We couldn't do what we do without you, and I just want to say a very big thank you to helping us serve our community at such a difficult time. Thank you and God bless. So you probably heard me say in the last few weeks, the church isn't closed, it just looks different. And we've pivoted to doing what we're doing now. But the way that we have pivoted and the way that you are serving our community is very tangible as you just saw. So thanks for being the church. Thanks for still being for Gwinnett. And even though these are challenging days, I do believe God is writing a greater story that we will one day see. And with your generosity like this, it's one of the things that that story is going to feature. So let me pray for us. God, thank you for our incredible community partners. And I pray for people watching today. God, that they, they may need a job, they may, um, they may have a health situation. God, whatever it may be, I pray today that they would realize that there's an anchor for this storm. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that today. So thank you for this incredible group of people that have, let, that have allowed your love and grace and generosity flow not just to them, but through them. So I pray for this time, and may this week ahead, as what we're about to talk about, may it, may it so mark us today that it gives us an anchor of peace and hope and assurance in the week ahead. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So about seven weeks ago, Wendy and I were at dinner with some friends. We came home. I turned on ESPN to watch an NBA game, and the breaking news was the NBA cancels its regular season. And I thought, wait, what? 
Then the next day, I was scheduled to fly out later in the day to speak at a business conference, and I got a call from a friend who was organizing the conference, and he said, hey, Jeff, we're gonna cancel the conference. And from that point on, like you, it seemed like a series of cancellations were happening. And then seven or so weeks later, here we find ourselves, and I don't know about you, maybe you don't feel this way, but here's how I feel in, in many ways. I feel like a small little tiny boat facing this massive storm, and this storm just continues to kind of crash in on this tiny boat of my life, if you will. It, it, it kind of reminds me, remember the movie, The Perfect Storm with George Clooney? The, the movie poster, you can actually Google this, it shows the little boat that George Clooney was on facing this massive storm. And it seems like every day there's like conflicting news and bad news and sometimes good news, like one day the stock market's up and then the next day, oh no, it's down. And then, then one day it's like, hey, we're flattening the curve. And then the next day it's like, no, it's gonna be 18 months longer. And it's just like one crashing wave after another in the tiny boat of our lives. And I don't know about you, but I've decided I just can't live that way. I, that's just too emotionally, mentally, and physically exhausting. I need an anchor. And the great news is, is that you and I have an anchor. And what I wanna talk about today is, I don't wanna demean, or de not demean, I don't wanna diminish, rather, um, the, the, the challenges of what we face this, these days. But at the same time, I want you to know that, that there's, there's an anchor of hope, there's an anchor of courage, there's, there's a real truth anchor that's available to you and me, that we don't have to be a little boat that's crashing in and, and tossed back and forth, that we can allow the waves to come, and, and the waves are coming, and they will continue to come in one form or another, but at the end of the day, we can still stand strong because there is an anchor in our hearts, in our souls, in our lives. And so for the next couple of weeks, I wanna point you to a collection of verses that I think share with us the anchor in trying days like this, maybe unlike any collection of verses in the Bible. And in fact, if you were to say, what are the top 10 collection of verses in the Bible? No doubt this, these, these verses would be in the top 10. I think they would be in the top five. I think actually they might be in the top three, maybe in the top two of all of the Bible. But these verses, over years, the years and centuries now, have been able to give an, be an anchor for millions and millions of people, not because of the words them, they, of themselves, obviously, but because of who these words point to and what these verses provide. So over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna look at these collection of verses. We're gonna do two things, but before that happens, I simply wanna read these verses to you. And maybe this is why you came here today, to, to, to tune in online and to hear these verses. Maybe the Lord wants to just share these verses to you as an anchor in this storm to say, hey, yeah, the, the waves are crashing, but you're not a boat without an anchor. Let me be your anchor. And these verses really help provide an anchoring to our soul that provides a peace that can be a, a sense of calm for us. And my hope for all of us at Gwinnett Church is that we would be people that can know that in the face of a perfect storm like this is, that there's an anchor available to us. And this, these collection, this collection of verses shows us that in a very powerful way. This is what this says. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. So what I want us to do over the next couple of Sundays, we're gonna break this psalm up in one of two ways. Today, we're gonna to talk about who the shepherd is, and next week, we're gonna talk about what the shepherd does. So today, we're gonna to talk about who the shepherd is. Next week, we're gonna talk about what the shepherd does. But as we talk about who and what, I hope it provides an anchor for you. Now, as some of you know, I'm a preacher's kid, so I've been in church all my life, and growing up, 
The, the translation of the Bible that we used was the King James Version. Many of you are familiar with this. Great translation, sometimes a little hard to understand. So when I first heard Psalm 23, verse one, in the King James translation as a kid, here's how it sounded. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And honestly, that was always very confusing for me as a kid because I always thought, why wouldn't you want the Lord to be your shepherd? I don't get that. But what I later would understand, and obviously I wasn't the brightest kid in my class, what I would understand was this translation, which was, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. That makes a whole lot more sense, at least to me, but that also presents a little bit of a problem. And that problem is this, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Really? Have you checked your 401k lately? <laughs> Have you looked at the unemployment numbers lately? Do you know someone who has the virus? On and on, do you know an event or something that you were looking forward to that was canceled or postponed? So when we have this verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing, and then we look at the present day circumstances, how does this verse stand up with any sense of credibility to the reality of the loss in one form or another that all of us have experienced in these days? I think that's a great question. I think it's a great question to say, hey, is this something just nice and sweet and pretty that you know, religions say, but in the face of the heat of reality, it kind of melts away? Or is there something here? Is there something that we can anchor onto that can say in the face of what we're experiencing right now, no, it's still true. It has been true for, since the time that King David wrote this, and it is true now. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And if we can get there, what a great anchor that would be, especially in these days, right? So here's the great news. Many, many, many years later, after Psalm 23 was originally written, someone appears on the scene. And this someone kind of takes Psalm 23 and personalizes it in a very powerful way. And in doing so, points us to a reality that you and I can look at a situation in days like this and say with credibility, hey, despite the circumstances, despite the challenges, the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. That someone is Jesus. And Jesus has something powerful to say in John chapter 10. And when I think you take Psalm 23 and you take John chapter 10 and you connect them, Psalm 23, already a great Psalm, elevates to an even higher standard, to an even, even higher level because Jesus comes onto the scene and says, hey, the shepherd that King David was writing about, I know who that is is, and this is what Jesus says in John chapter 10, and what he says in John chapter 10 personalizes Psalm 23 in a powerful, powerful way. This is John chapter 10, verse 11. I, this is Jesus talking, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So Jesus is saying, in essence, the way this psalm should read, the, the, the way the person that this psalm, Psalm 23, this very famous psalm, do you know who it's referencing? It's actually referencing me, and I'm a good shepherd. And I came here to lay my life down for you. And if I laid my life down for you, I'm not gonna forget you. If I laid my down life for you, I'm not gonna not remember who you are. I'm not gonna forget your name. I'm not gonna look the other way. I'm a really good shepherd. And I came so that you might have life and have it to the full. That's who Jesus is referencing. He's referencing himself. That's who King David was ultimately writing about. That the Lord is my shepherd is Jesus. And he's a good shepherd. And he came to lay his life down for you and for me. And then he repeats this in verse 14. He says, I'm the good shepherd. and I know my sheep and my sheep know me. 
just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And again, I lay down my life for the sheep. Then verse 16, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. This is actually a reference to you. That Jesus is saying, hey, this isn't just for the Jewish people, that this is gonna be for the whole world. This message of who I am and what I've come here to do, it's gonna spread all over the world. And here we are going at church on the other side of the planet. And Jesus is saying to you, hey, that, verse, that, that wonderful Psalm, Psalm 23, it's a great Psalm, is actually talking about me. And I'm a good shepherd and I laid down my life for you. Don't forget that. And he continues. He says, the reason my father loves me is that I laid down my life for you, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. So what Jesus is saying is I came to the planet to lay down my life, to pay for your sins and to, to, to provide salvation and peace with God, that you have peace with God through me. And everything that provides you from the presence of God peace with God, the knowledge that God is for you, that you are a son and a daughter, that you are an inheritor of the kingdom of God that's available to you because Jesus not only laid down his life for you, he took it up again. He defeated the grave that nothing, not even death, not even the grave can hold him back from bringing you to the Father through grace, through love, through mercy. And because of the fact that he's a good shepherd and he is leading you well. Now, Jesus was really clear. He didn't promise us that we would have an easy, pain-free life. He said, no, no, you will have difficulty in this world, but take heart, I've overcome all of this. And so Jesus continues to point us to this in John chapter 10, Verses 22. It says, Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, But I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. And then he starts talking about you, if you're a follower of Jesus. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. This this first part in verse 27, I wanna point you to. My sheep listen to my voice. Go to church. One of the most important things that we can do in this season is to listen to Jesus like never before. So let me push at us a little bit. I'm not against watching the news. I'm not against staying current and updated. But as you look at time in the scriptures and time on Facebook or social media, if you will, which is the heavier weight of time for you? I think one of the things that you and I need to be doing in this season is spending more time in the scriptures than ever before, allowing the shepherd to speak to us. Because Jesus says, the sheep know my voice. Now, this is an interesting analogy because, you know, sheep are low to the ground and a shepherd has a higher point of view. The shepherd, ha- the, the thoughts of the shepherd are at a higher level. They can see from a greater perspective than the sheep. And what Jesus is saying is stay close, stay close to me so that you can listen to my voice. Stay close to me so that you can understand that even though it seems like the world is falling apart, you can anchor to me because I'm a good shepherd. I laid down my life for you. Stay close to me. And so as you look at how you're spending your week and your time, there's not anything wrong with binging on Netflix, but at the end of the day, we gotta make sure that we are spending time here listening to the shepherd 
because my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Verse 28, I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hands. I give them eternal life. They will never perish and no one can snatch them from my hands. In other words, you know what this means? You're, when you place your faith in Jesus, you're anchored in. You have eternal life. And that's just not eternal life in heaven. That's true. But eternal life now. What that means is, is that the life that Jesus gives, that even in the face of challenges, there's peace, there's joy, there's contentment that comes from him because we are anchored in him, both now and in eternity. That he gives us eternal life. We will not perish. The grave has nothing on us. And nothing and no one can snatch us from him. We are anchored in, locked in. This is why David can write, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing because I'm anchored to Jesus. But then Jesus does something that I think takes it even to a higher level. If that's not enough, if that's not enough to say, okay, I'm anchored in, I have eternal life, I will never perish, that no one can take me from Jesus, that that he knows me, that I'm gonna stay close. He knows the situation that I'm in. He hasn't forgotten me. That's all true. Jesus takes it up an even higher level. And the next collection of verses, which is, I believe, um, just incredible, because what Jesus is in essence saying is, hey, it's not just me that's leading you. My father, my father who has given them, the sheep, to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. And then he said this, that that sent all the religious leaders into a tizzy. I and the father are one. And that's what Jesus is saying is, hey, no one can snatch you out of my hands. But if that's not enough, The Father and I are one, which means that no one can snatch you from the hands of your heavenly Father. You are anchored in to the creator of the universe who loves you, who sent his son to lay down his life for you, who then took his life back up, came out of that tomb. And that is your story now connected to Jesus. And so what Jesus says to you is that I give you eternal life. None of you will perish and no one can snatch you from me. You are secure. And when we understand that, here's how we ultimately can read Psalm 23.1. You ready for this? And here's what I'm gonna invite you into. Here's our action item. What do I want you to do with this? Here's what I want you to do. Psalm 23.1, when you understand John 10 and Psalm 23.1, I think you could actually read Psalm 23 verse 1 this way. Jesus is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Go to church. What would happen if when a tidal wave of information came your way, your response was this? Okay, not denying it, but Jesus is my shepherd. I lack lack nothing. What what would happen to your soul? What would happen to the peace? What would happen to the anxiety and the stress when you would push back and, and say over that, Jesus is my shepherd. I lack nothing. A friend of mine made this point recently, which I thought was a really great point. He said, you know, too often we listen to ourselves and we don't speak over ourselves. We, we listen to ourselves too much, but we don't speak truth over ourselves. I love that thought. What if this week, instead of listening to the worries and the fears and the anxieties, that we just spoke truth over our lives? When we felt that fear and that uncertainty and that anxiety, and as a tidal wave hits this week, perhaps, we just say, well, Jesus is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And then the bottom line for today really is this. The other other sentence I think that you can speak over your life is, I lack nothing because Jesus is everything. I lack nothing 
because Jesus is everything. Hey, I know many of you have job challenges right now. What if, in the middle of this, you just stayed close to the Savior and you listened to him like never before? I think what you'll discover is that your Savior says, hey, we're gonna get through this and I'm gonna walk you through this. By the way, I am your good shepherd. I am leading you. So listen to my voice. Stay close. Follow me. So this week, here's my challenge for you, for all of us. Will we speak this truth over our lives when the fear, when the tidal wave hits? Jesus is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And I lack nothing because Jesus is everything. No one can snatch you from his hands. Now, many years ago, when I was a kid at a church in Norcross, not too far from down the road where the Sugar Hill location is, my dad pastored there, and one day his mentor came to our church. And this guy was a legend. His name, some of you might remember this man. His name was Louis D. Newton. Uh, I grew up Southern Baptist, and he was known as Mr. Georgia Baptist. So Louis D. Newton came to speak at my dad's church, and it was a big deal. It was like Michael Jordan coming to a basketball game to watch you play, right? So he, he spoke and, at our church that day, and so after the service, everyone had left, and it was Mr. Newton, my dad, my younger brother, John, and me, and we were little guys, I don't know, maybe like seven and five, something like that, eight and six. So at the end of the conversation, um, Reverend Newton was a rather large, tall man, so he, he's saying goodbye to us, and he bends down, and he looks, now he's on eye level with John and me, all right? And so he points to my dad's, my dad's shoes, which is kind of odd, right? So he points to my dad's shoes and he says, gentlemen, see these footsteps? Follow them, follow them. I've never forgotten that. He wasn't saying go follow him to be a pastor. That's not what he was saying. He's saying, see these footsteps? They're following Jesus. And if you'll follow these footsteps that are following Jesus, it will lead you somewhere because Jesus always, always leads us to something good. As my friend Louis Giglio says, if it's not good yet, God's not done yet. So Gwinnett Church, we have an incredibly good Savior. And because of who He is, and for what, because of what He has done, the reality is, that you have incredible connections to your heavenly Father. And nothing, not unemployment, nothing, not a virus, nothing, not a wild and crazy stock market can snatch you away from the Good Shepherd. So this week, speak that truth over your life. Jesus is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I lack nothing because Jesus is everything. That's the who of Psalm 23. So this week, let's anchor onto that truth. Live it out this week. And then next Sunday, we're gonna come back and talk about what the shepherd does. To usher us into the season of speaking that truth over our lives, Adam's gonna sing this song over us. But before that happens, I'm gonna pray for you. And then um, what we're gonna do this week is to speak that truth over our lives this week. Father, thank you. Thank you that nothing can snatch us out of your hands. Thank you for sending your son and the incredible savior and shepherd. And because of what he has done, because of who he is, we lack nothing. So in the challenges that disguise themselves in very powerful, real, and tangible ways as a place that where we lack a lot, will you do what you do? Provide for our needs like only you can do. But in the middle of all of that, remind us that we are anchored in to the good shepherd and that Jesus is our shepherd and we lack nothing. And it's, his hint, it's in his name that we pray this. Amen.
Oh, how high would I climb mountains if the mountains were where you hide? Oh, how far I'd scale the valleys if you graced the other side. Oh, how long have I chased rivers, lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply in the highlands and the heartache and neither more or less inclined I would search and stop at nothing you're just not that hard to find I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you in the mountains in my way You're the summit where my feet are So I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadow No less faithful when the night leads me astray you're the heaven where my heart is In the highlands and the heartache all the same Oh, how far beneath your glory Does your kindness extend the path from where your feet rest on the sunrise To where you sweep the sinners pass Oh, how fast would you come running If just to shadow me through the night Trace my steps through all my failure And walk me out shepherd who like a lamb was slain for me so I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you in the mountains in my way you're the summit where my feet are so I will praise you in the valleys of the sea no less God within the shadow No less faithful women than I need to be saved. You're the heaven where my heart is In the highlands and the heartache of the sun Whoa, whoa, Come the pastures we call graves 
a mighty river flowing upwards from a deep but empty grave. I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the sun and where my feet are. So I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the heartache all the same.